Ignition sequence starts. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. The technology of ag spraying has moved into the space age. And to get the technological boost you've been looking for, you need the expertise offered at an Operation Safe Clinic. We are excited that you want to participate in one of our Operation Safe fly-in clinics. Operation SAFE stands for Self-Regulating Application and Flight Efficiency, and you can find one of these clinics near you by checking the NAAA website, newsletter, or contacting your state association. Operation SAFE clinics are designed to help you set up and adjust your aircraft spray system for more accurate and safe applications while applying crop protection products. It's a great way to annually document the accuracy of your equipment, especially if you have made any modifications or adjustments. At the clinic, your aircraft will be professionally analyzed for pattern uniformity and droplet size by one of our trained Operation Safe analysts. They will personally help you interpret and understand your test results, plus make recommendations on how to improve your equipment if needed. We understand the value of your time and the financial commitment needed to attend, and we want to maximize your experience by preparing you so that the hours spent at the clinic will be rewarding and a wise investment. To better prepare you and to enhance this clinic experience, NAREF has developed this video as a guide for planning and participating in Operation SAFE. In order for the fly-in coordinators to facilitate a successful clinic, they need to know how many participants to plan for. For this reason, it is critical for you to sign up now and schedule your time to attend. Before taking off for our clinic, it is very important that you clean your spray system thoroughly, including the tank, pump, plumbing, boom, and nozzles, as well as the outside, including the fuselage, wings, and hopper. This means all traces of crop protection products should be properly removed. The presence of any residue in or on the aircraft is prohibited. The safety of our staff and participants is always our highest priority. And, after all, this is an operation safe. Also, when cleaning your aircraft and spray system, be sure that it is done over a sealed and approved secondary containment pad and that your wastewater is properly disposed of. Next, check your entire spray system under pressure for leaks, making sure all components are working properly, including your electronics. By doing this, you will be able to complete all of your test runs in a timely manner. Make all your necessary repairs prior to coming. All aircraft nozzles should be flow tested to ensure they are delivering the correct amount. Nozzles of the same size should have no more than 10% variance in flow across the boom. By looking at the boom, you can usually tell where the worst nozzle flow rates are occurring. And be sure to bring extra parts such as nozzles, drops, elbows, nipples, check valves, and tools that may be needed to make any adjustments while at the fly-in. In order to analyze your aircraft accurately, an environmentally safe fluorescent dye is added to your water, which makes your spray pattern more visible to the calibration detection equipment. It is also important that you provide the operation safe analysts with the correct information regarding your aircraft make, model, end number, nozzle manufacturer and type, the orifice size, deflection angle, and number of nozzles by type and size, along with boom pressure, target GPA, and swath width. You will need this detailed information for each test series you plan to make. A form is provided online at NAAA's website, and additional forms are available at the clinic. 
Although fresh water is often provided at the fly-in, it is suggested that you bring at least 50 gallons of clean water with you when testing for 5 gallon per acre or less applications, and 100 gallons for above 5 gallons per acre applications or multiple tests. Helicopters who find it difficult to carry 50 gallons should check to be sure water is available at the fly-in. After a pilot's briefing, instructions will be provided at the clinic on how to add the fluorescent dye to your water and instructions for its safe disposal. When approaching the fly-in, please observe all local traffic and standard airport procedures. Be especially aware of any aircraft flying their test passes. Always monitor the local airport radio frequency and be courteous and professional. Look for the parking area and park close to the analysis center, leaving room for new arrivals and unobstructed taxiways. Once you have parked, introduce yourself to the fly-in staff at the analysis center. There, you will receive a briefing about the clinic, your schedule, instructions for water, adding fluorescent dye, and the proper disposal for any remaining dye. The briefing will include information on what order the attending aircrafts will be tested, this is usually done by a sign-in sheet where you provide your name, N number, and the tests you desire to have done. Directions will also be given to you on how to stage your aircraft when the flight line is ready for you to fly, plus an explanation of the testing protocol. If this is your first fly-in experience, it will be helpful for you to visit the flight line and observe their procedures. That way, you will know what is expected of you when it's your time to go. Become familiar with the flight line signaling system so that you'll know what the instructions mean. It may be a flagging system or radio communications through your comm radio. Do not fly until directed to do so, and then do not cross the flight test line until you are given the proper signal. Each liquid test, or series as they are called, consists of three passes over the flight line for most spray analysis systems. There will be a short delay between each pass to reset the string and pattern measuring equipment for the next pass. Dry material tests usually consist of just one pass. Check with the analyst during your briefing to verify the number of passes you are expected to fly during a test series. All test passes will be over the center of the flight line, flying into the wind and at your appropriate application altitude. If you are unsure the altitude at which you should be applying, ask the Operation Safe analyst for their recommendations. The center of the flight line will be clearly marked, usually with white flags. If you are unsure as to their whereabouts, ask the fly-in staff so that you know what to look for when you're in the air. Fly your aircraft in a stable and level manner over the test line. Turn your boom on or open your gate well in advance, maybe 300 to 400 feet ahead of the test line, and do not shut it off until you're at least 300 feet past the string or dry collectors. Do not alter your flight path until the boom or gate is turned off and you are clear of the test area. This is very critical because any irregular movement of the aircraft may cause turbulence over the test line with possibilities of distorting the pattern, which will result in bad test data and wasted time. Also, be aware that pattern testing oftentimes occurs over active taxi and runways, so always be aware of local and fly-in traffic. Again, if you have a question, please talk to a staff member. They are there to help make this experience a pleasant one. Once your test series has been completed, land and park in the staging area and proceed to the analysis center to await the results of your test. Please remember that the analysts are busy running the analysis in the order they were completed in the field. You will be notified when your results are to be reviewed. When discussing the results with the analyst, make sure all of the information concerning your results is clearly explained to you. If something is unclear to you, do not hesitate to ask questions. Get the analyst's contact information in case you have questions at a later date. If you plan to do additional testing, 
We recommend that you first get the results from the first test to make sure there are no major issues with the pattern before proceeding with your other tests. The additional tests will require completing the necessary sign-in forms and re-signing the test order list again before proceeding. Make sure the information is accurate and complete. Do not leave any information off the form, even though you filled them out earlier, and give them back to the analyst. Make sure that you are both clear as to what you want to accomplish. If you are attending a multi-state fly-in, be sure to follow the proper protocols for your specific state. At all times during the fly-in, follow general flight safety procedures. Do not fly near spectators, no stunt flying, and avoid allowing spray drift onto spectators. The aircraft in the scenes with teachers and schoolchildren have been properly washed down to ensure that they can be safely observed and touched by those attending the safe fly-in. Remember, your actions at a fly-in reflect on the whole aerial application industry. That is why it's important to make sure your aircraft has been properly washed and cleaned prior to participating in a clinic. You never know who might be attending and public safety is always priority one. Risky flying, leftover crop protection product residues, and other things can leave a negative impression on spectators who might not be familiar with aerial application. Operation Safe can also be a viable tool in demonstrating our professional standards and technological advancements, as well as our proactive stance toward safety. Now that you have experienced an Operation Safe fly-in, we hope this video has helped you have a successful experience and that you are now armed with valuable information that can help you make more efficient and safe applications. Take what you learned back to your business and use it wisely. Improving the quality of aerial application is a benefit to you, your business, your agricultural community, and the nation. The benefits of participation in Operation SAFE. Trained analysts offer technical advice for swath width and uniformity. Determination of optimum effective swath width. Droplet spectrum analysis. Uniform coverage. Drift mitigation. Documented results and certification of participation for NAAA members builds confidence in pilot and equipment performance. Operation safes are strongly supported by chemical manufacturers who invest in the future of chemical safety and professionalism. Although participation is voluntary in most states and mandatory in a few, the overall cost benefit is positive for application safety and confidence in performance. The bottom line for attendance in an Operation Safe clinic is increased efficacy in application and safety.